Well, this sort of turned up. This is the new Wish video that I will be working on very soon. I did not expect it to be turning up so soon during the iPhone clone month. However, it has arrived and I must review it. So after this video is done, I'm going to start working on this, then continue with doing the rest of the clones. I decided to sleep for the last two days, just day and night. For no real particular reason, but this is why this video is kind of just a tad bit late, so let's get into it. Greetings everyone and welcome back to yet again another video in the Phone Archive, a series in which I look at weird, strange, stupid and obscure phones from all around the globe for your entertainment. And this is part 4 in my iPhone Clone Month, a series in which I look at various iPhone clones from the 2G to the iPhone 7. This one is a very, very special one that I'd like to share with you all. This one is a very close one to my heart. This one is very different from the rest of them. And now allow me to introduce to you our friend... The Music Mobile A2658. Now, as I said before, this isn't an iPhone clone per se, but it has the Apple logo on it, thus it makes it relevant. I was actually going to leave this as a bit of a bonus video towards the end of the whole series, but I kind of already took the test photos with it and played around with it, and I thought it was quite funny, so that's why I'm going to show it today. This one I bought off eBay for about 10 bucks, I think, maybe a year and a half ago, something like that. Uh, it also came with another one as well, which I can show at the end of the series. That one I can definitely show at the end of the series, because that's not really relevant. Whereas this one, it, it's not relevant either, but it doesn't really matter. Uh, yeah, 10 bucks, and I think it was like $8 postage, and it was just box, in bag, sent to me, at door, done, there you go. So, um, without further ado, let's have a look around the uh, Music Mobile A2658. I'm going to have to remember that during the whole video. So, as you can see, it's a, it's a pink phone, with the Apple logo on it, with picture of soccer going on, because why not? You can actually see the home button has a little Apple icon just in there. If you can see that. Spoilers, this one does not. Uh, around the side of the box, it says the specifications. Support two GSM SIM cards, Bluetooth, external speakers, Yamaha sound, wow, TFT 2.6 inch high definition screen, high definition digital camera, camera and Vidicon. Viticon, is that a new convention that they made up for 2021? I don't know. GPRS, WAP, MMS, support up to 2 gig external memory card, wow. Multi-languages supported, support 4 band. Love how they put it in caps, 4 band. Talking pitch shift. Okay, this mobile is designed according to body, art, slim and good feel. I'm feeling good, so thank you. Uh, support Nokia battery and charger, because it actually did come with a Nokia battery, yeah. Uh, there's another different colorway there, in black doesn't quite have the same feel as the pink one though. Uh, around the other side is just exactly the same, and around the other side is exactly the same. But we do have like little icons to say, uh, two sims, Bluetooth, a little iPod, speakers, messaging, camera, uh, lights, maybe earphones perhaps, and FM. So yeah, with all that being said, let's go ahead and open up said box. Inside the box we have, a new pair of headphones with that weird proprietary 12-pin Chinese connector port on it, so I can test these headphones and see if they work, because I have a feeling that the other ones have decided to just stuff up, the ones I was testing on the previous clones. So I've got a brand new pair here, never been used, sealed, brand new, so we can try them. Uh, we have a cleaning cloth uh, and a screen protector for probably the other device, to be honest, because there's another thing there, and another baggie, and another baggie, and... There's the Nokia battery. This is actually the one that came with it, and it's uh, pretty beaten up, but at least it's real. Look at the hologram. Ooh. Uh, we get a user manual. I'm not too sure if this is for this device or not. Have a look. GSM GPRS digital mobile phone. Yes, it is. Uh, does it have a picture somewhere? It doesn't seem to have a picture of the device in here. Send the name card. You can send the name card via short message or Bluetooth to a destination cell phone. So it's in the same Chinese English, but it's probably used for a number of different devices and doesn't specifically match our one. So we don't need to worry about that. What we need is the battery, our earphones, throw the box away. And now we can shift our attention to the mini mobile music thing, I don't know, I've got another name for it. So this is it here in all of its wonderful pink and white glory. We have a keypad, which is good, four-way directional pad. In the little silver area just here, 
well, it's going to be really hard to see, but there is actually a graphic in there. It's like a flowery sort of um, floral design in there. But there you go. But we've got this weird-ass laid-out keypad, similar to some of those old Nokias that decided to have the star and hash keys over to that side instead of there. Uh, but we've got two option buttons, call and call end. Uh, we have two little shortcut keys as well, one for the dual SIM and one for MP3. And we just have this little badge here that just says MP3. Okay. We also have these little shortcut buttons on the screen. So if you touch them with a pen, it opens up these little shortcuts. It's really strange how a lot of these cheapo phones implemented this. I think it's a good idea, to be honest, but hey, I could be crazy. We get two little network status logos up here for no particular reason. We got our earpiece as well, but uh, that's basically, you know, the whole thing that's going around it. Nothing on the side. On the bottom, we have our proprietary 12-pin Chinese port, as well as a charger port to fit one of those really tiny Nokia chargers, the ones that went in, for example, the 6120s and all that. I can't remember the specific name of them, but it's one of them. We've got a microphone as well. We also have a stylus that comes with it. So that will be useful to use. I'll probably be using the keypad most of the time anyways. On the other side, nothing. And at the top, nothing. But are you ready to see the back? I think you're all ready to see this. Presenting. So, guys, we need to make a device to sell. Okay. We put the Apple logo on it backwards so they can't sue us. Done. What else do you want to put on there? What about Barbie? Why do you want to put Barbie on there? Because we can. All right, cool. Let's just put that on there. For some reason, we have the Apple logo backwards, a floral design on the camera, and Barbie. Because it's pink. So Barbie. This is like a badge and it sticks up. See, it's even shimmery and shiny and all that stuff to go with the nice pink that's going on here. It's a very strange design, but as I said, because it's got the Apple logo, that's why I've decided to feature it in this. But yeah, I have no idea the creative process of this. The box is just really strange because it doesn't show this, and instead it has soccer on the screen, and then you open it up, it's more of a kid's phone. Oh, I don't know, man, I have no idea. Anyways, taking the back cover off. It feels like it's possibly some sort of metal then it's got a plastic underside. I don't know. It could be. See? Those two holes there go onto the back. This could be aluminium. Possible. I don't know. Could be. But uh, inside of the device, we have what looks like to just be one SIM card slot, but the other one is just tucked up there. But they're both 2G and they don't work in Australia, so no big deal. But it is called the Music Mobile A2658. Both IMEIs, the bands, and made in China. That's basically it. That's all around this device. So... Without further ado, let's go ahead and put the battery in. The battery connector is actually here, which I find a little bit strange. Every time I've tried to put the battery in, I've always instinctively just went like that. And I've went, oh, wait a second, why doesn't that work? It's because it goes that way. Sure, cool. No worries, Barbie phone. Now there is a tiny little scratch on here, which may indicate it was lightly used by someone. Maybe, I don't know the full history of this because it was just on eBay and just sold pretty much as is. So, yeah, all right, well, let's, let's go ahead and power it on. I actually can't remember what it does. Oh, good luck. Oh, thanks. Ah. Now, this is called the Rave Party Mobile Phone version 2.0, because remember the second iPhone clone I had a look at had the same party lights going around here? Well, this one has it too. And uh, look at the keypad lights. They change color, by the way. They're blue and pink at the moment, but they do change colors depending on what you do. See? Slide to unlock. See? Green. Goes back to blue. So it's going to be a very interesting device. Yeah, pressing the middle key presents us with our main applications. Um, but if we press, like, the shortcut keys, this one, that should show our music. Yes, it does. Uh, can we see the IMEI info? Yes, we can. Look at those, like, window animations. It's a bit weird, but all right. Um, well, I don't need the stylus, actually. So, all right, let's have a look here. There we go. We got phone book, messages, call center, <laughs> even the menu. It's like got little animations. That's, that's funny. Multimedia, file manager, fun and games, user profiles, organizer, services, and extra. And shortcuts. I didn't see that one. So, pretty basic standard stuff. Um... That's the calendar. That's our camera. We'll come back to that. Shortcuts, all that sort of stuff. Just with the D-pad, you can do that. Oh, ringtones, we'll have to try them. So, all right, so let's go straight into 
here. So phone book. Uh, let's see if there's any... No. Okay, so there's no contacts on here, so maybe someone didn't use it after all. Messages. Insert SIM. Can't do that. Call center is just... Yep, same thing. Just insert SIM. Settings will come back to. Multimedia. You've got camera, image viewer, video recorder, video player, audio player, sound recorder, and FM radio. Schedule FM record. Melody compose. Oh, that'll be fun, especially with a keypad now. Um, so pretty much the same thing as you expect on the previous ones, the Java OS that has... Just, it's got the same layout except a different skin, that's all. Which you'll notice until we get up to the iPhone 4S clone. That's when it becomes Android. Before that, it's all the Java OS with this standard layout. Uh, file manager, let's come into here. Phone, we have 512K of internal memory. Oof. It'll probably be 32 megabytes of onboard storage. Well, we've got 468K free, which for this, you can take a couple of photos and take a very short video. And uh, that's it, you're out of memory. But our memory card is the usual 512 meg one, which is all preloaded with all the stuff that we need. Fun and games, we have games. And then we have Magic Sushi. So we'll come back to that, of course. Uh, user profiles, general, meeting, outdoor. This will be where our ringtones are, so we can come back to that very shortly. Organizer, calendar, had a look at that. 2009 as well. To-do list, nothing in there. Alarm, it's got 7 a.m. and then 12 a.m. Imagine waking up to this every morning. Blech. World clock, Brisbane. Getting closer, mate, getting closer. Uh, services which would be WAP and all that sort of stuff, but because I don't have the SIM in there, it's not going to tell me. Uh, extra, we have calculator. Fair. Currency converter. As I said in the previous videos, this is not up to date, so it's not going to be quite as accurate as just doing a Google search, but at least you've got one. Ebook reader. Do we have anything? No, we don't. Uh, I called it a bookshelf. Okay. Uh, and Bluetooth. Has it been actually paired with anything? Let's have a look. No. There you go. So it may have been factory reset before sent to me, who knows. And then shortcuts is just like memory status. These shortcuts aren't actually shortcuts because you go to them and it just says add and delete all. Like volume, for example, add, edit. So if you edit it, it does that. That's very confusing. I'll just do it the old school way. So now if you get your little stylus and then go boop, see, and then you go like that and then go like this. See? Actual shortcuts. Honestly, I think it's a nifty little idea, but for a screen this big, it's not really that handy because if you went to like that, that, you know, you'd have to use a stylus for it. If it was a bigger screen, you could probably do it, but with this, it's a little bit too small. That's what she said. Okay. All right, I'm going to go with a different method with this video. So we've had a quick squeeze at what we've actually got on this device, but I'm going to start at the top here. Uh, phone book, we've had a look at. Messages, we've looked at. Call center, we've had a look at. Settings, let's go into settings. UI effect settings. This is going to be fun. Screen switch effect. Random... St oh, that's why all the transitions are doing what they're doing. Okay, that's fair. Um, well, I think we'll keep it on random because it's very random. Uh, main menu effect. Oh, same thing, random style. Okay, I gotcha. I got what's going on. So all those weird transitions that are happening, like the slides and the flips and all that sort of stuff, that's in there. Dual SIM settings, obviously we can't do anything because we don't have a SIM card installed. Pen calibration, we are not going to touch. Phone setup, uh, time and date, schedule power on and off, language, preferred input method, dedicated key, handwriting, keypad color LED. On, off, music color LED, and LED status. Oh, look at that. Look at it go. How many LEDs are actually in this thing? Including the keypad lights as well. Wait, I want to I want to do something. Look at it go. <laughs> now you can really see what's going on. Back in 2009, you could have been the life of the party with this thing. Look at it go. You can change it. Look at the modes. Ooh. They're all pretty much exactly the same thing, so I'm going to keep it on auto because when we play sounds, it'll look really good. Uh, LED setting, power on LED, power off LED, MP3 LED, incoming call LED, and message LED. So basically the whole thing lights up whenever you do anything. Key press LED. Oh, oh yeah, okay, I gotcha, yep, cool. Uh, display characteristics, wallpaper. What wallpapers do we have? Do we have the actual iPhone one? Yes, we do, so we're gonna set that. Actually, what's the second one? 
Beach. Flowers. Theme image. Okay. Can we actually change the theme? I wonder if we can. Screensaver doesn't seem to have anything. Power on display. Animation 1. Can we... What? Oh, okay. Well, we'd rather keep it as good luck, because that's funny. So then that means the power off display, when we turn it off, what does it say? Palm trees. No, I wanted to say good luck when it shuts off as well. Show date and time, clock type, LCD backlight. It's pretty fine, 45 seconds before it switches off, so that's all good. The viewing angles aren't actually too bad for this display. It's not too bad for a 2.6 inch cheapy display. Unlike some of the other clients I've had a look at, I'm doing this while I'm trying to see what's going on, so at least I can see what's going on. Security setup, we don't need to do anything, and restore factory settings, that's pretty much it. So, basically all settings is used for is what it looks like when it switches off, and when it looks like when it switches back on. Uh, multimedia, let's go. Why not? Camera, I have done the pictures already. They look, uh, uh, you'll, you'll see them, but it's the same layout as the previous clones. Stuff at the side, stuff at the top. If we go options, the camera settings, sorry, it's in image settings is what we want. 640 by 480 and the image quality is high. Uh, but you can change all the stuff in here as per usual. Um, and then coming to video, it just says, I think it's just high. That's it. Yeah. Hi. All right. Well, it's time I splice in the photos and video that I took with this thing, so enjoy what you're about to see. Alright, testing the video quality on the Barbie iPhone clone thing, I have no idea. There's our frogs. Probably 176 by 144 at 5 frames a second, I'd say. It'll look okay, I guess. Let's sort of have a look through the trees to some flowers just there. See the bright ass sun just there. Panning along the brick wall with my shadow. Yeah, you can see it. That's all right. It's all good. You can just see Stuart just there. He's had his fair share of sun and rain for today. There are bees in there somewhere. I don't know where they are, but there's bees in there. My whole backyard needs to be nuked because there's bees everywhere. Look at that 10 times digital zoom. Holy moly. Okay, so I can't see the details of the video yet, but I think it's 176 by 144 at 4 or 5 frames a second, which is on par with the previous ones I've had a look at. Nothing special. They probably honestly all use the same camera, to be honest. Probably until the iPhone 4S clone, they probably change cameras, but otherwise, they're all the same. Uh, image viewer. Well, we'll be able to see some of the photos that I took on this. As you can see, zoom in if you want to see the, the lovely details of your photo. One of the photos I did take, I used the digital zoom on this, which was 10 times, and it looks absolutely dreadful. But at least it has it. But then again, every phone from like 2004 onwards had a digital zoom, and it looked pretty terrible. Uh, video player, we can see the movie that I have taken on here. The video quality on the Barbie iPhone clone thing, I have no idea. There's our frogs. So there you go. When playing videos, the thing lights up like a Christmas tree. So it's 2.25 p.m., so I'm not going to be waking up the neighbours with this. But uh, headphone users, just a warning, this is going to be quite loud. I will probably tone it down a little bit during editing, but uh, be prepared for what you're about to hear. And of course, using Mick Gordon's BFG 10,000 from the Doom Eternal OST, which, fun fact, Mick Gordon didn't even mix the Doom Eternal OST that was released. Instead, someone else done it to just rush it out the door. So Mick Gordon is furious. I feel his pain. Uh, okay, so let's go ahead and play this and see how it goes. So when you play a song as heavy as this, it just lights up like that. Why am I 4.6? Oof. Yeah, it's it's loud. All right, we'll try the next one, which got a bit of bass in it. Okay, here we go. Wow. 
109.5, I believe that's another radio station, but holy moly. The speaker itself is actually not too bad on this. At a loud volume, it's quite clear. If I chuck it down on a lower volume, it's still very clear. The bass is there. So, Barbie phone, you're doing something correct. What is wrong with you? Sound recorder, does that look exactly the same as our previous ones? No, it's different. We got little balls bouncing. Okay. So you have the option to use this tiny little on-screen keyboard to type in what you want. So, hello. Well, it actually works, that's fine. Or you can just use this. There you go. Or use the actual keyboard and use T9. I used to be really good at T9 texting. Now that I don't use it, I absolutely suck at it, so... But at least you can do it. All right, well, let's save that. Did you see the little smiley face with like arrows around it? That's funny. All right, let's play that. See what it sounds like. Oh, it's different. We got little balls bouncing. Okay. Yep, it's good. Uh, FM radio. Please plug in earphone. I got them. Now, of course, they're the world's cheapest headphones just with this on there. Oh my god, it doesn't actually feel like there's anything in there. <laughs> All right. Hey, there we go. Nice. Great value. Offer ends Tuesday excludes everyday down, down and clearance items. Well, Beth, the time's looking good. So glad you planned ahead. Speaking of planning ahead, there's another thing I think we should sort out now, Frank. Oh, yeah? Yeah, our funerals. Pre-planning with the Pine Funerals. Uh... Okay, I don't want to hear about funerals. No. Just the way we want. No. Like retirement. Yes. Sounds good to me. With a prepaid funeral from the Pine Funerals. I don't want a prepaid funeral. No. Stop. No. What is going on? Oh, thank God. Okay, well, the FM radio works, but... I couldn't stop it. It didn't want to stop. That was a bit of an experience. Almost went into a bit of a panic trying to shut that off. Uh, schedule FM record. Let's just not even. Uh, melody compose. Let's just press a bunch of buttons. Let it catch up. Okay. All right, let's play this. Classic. That is a new ringtone I should save and use for all the other clone devices. Wow. Cool. All right. What else have we got? Fun and games. Magic sushi. Come on. Let's put the sounds on. Ah. What? That paused it? Okay. Well, that's enough anyways. User profiles. Oh boy. This is going to be fun. Why? Well, that's hell. That's it? Oh. Okay. 
Well, uh, that's the preload of ringtones. Most of you have actually said that they're ripped off Nokia devices. Honestly, at the top of my head, I can't remember the preload of ringtones on most of the Nokia devices anyways, unless I actually had one in hand and was going through it, so I can't really tell you otherwise, but uh, you guys have said that they're all off Nokia devices anyways. Organizer, we've had a look at. Services, we've had a look at. Extra, we've had a look at. And shortcuts, we've had a look at. That's it. There's really not much else to have a look at, to be honest. You can't load Java games on here, which I really would have liked to have done, because I could have used the keypad to play it. I know a lot of you have said to try touchscreen games on the ones that do accept Java. I will do that for the upcoming iPhone clones, because I believe they accept Java games. Um, so I'll try and get some touchscreen Java apps, and we can try them out. This Barbie music mobile device, while it looks like, actually, I don't know what device it is ripping off. Probably something Nokia-related, most likely. All up, though, it's not actually a bad device, to be honest. It's got its LEDs. It's got a touchscreen. This... I was going to say the touchscreen's dead now, but that's okay. The speaker's not too bad on it. Uh, the LEDs are nice, as I've said. And just... It's a bit of an odd one because of the Apple logo and the Barbie and... Uh, I, yeah, okay. It's nothing special, but I thought this would just be a bit of a funny one to do part four on to throw you all off sort of thing. I can't really say much else about this, to be honest. It's done everything I needed it to do. So let's go ahead and uh, unlock it first. Please, there we go. And we'll switch it off. That was my good luck charm for tearing down the device and keeping it alive. As per usual, tools that we'll need. It's probably that. That's pretty much about it, to be honest. So the memory card just goes underneath there. We'll get to see when we take the motherboard off, but I believe it's just six screws holding it down together. So I'll go ahead and take them all off and we'll be able to take this frame off. I wonder if this one will just fall apart. Some don't even have any clips holding them down. They literally just fall apart once you take all the screws out. So we'll see if this one does it. Uh, okay, well, it's not going to fall apart. Okay, so this one comes apart a little bit different than the other ones. So we've got this little frame that comes off. And then we're basically exposed to our keyboard, which is just that there. And now we can count all the LEDs. Okay, so this device may be the most LEDs that I have seen loaded onto a device. If you can find one that has more, prove me wrong. But we've got one, two, three, four, five, six, seven, eight, nine, ten, eleven, twelve, thirteen, fourteen, fifteen, sixteen, seventeen, eighteen, nineteen, twenty, twenty-one, twenty-two, twenty-three, twenty-four, twenty-five, twenty-six, twenty-seven, twenty-eight, twenty-nine, thirty, thirty-one, thirty-two, thirty-three, thirty-four. Thirty-four fucking LEDs on this thing. Really? Oh, I didn't realize the earpiece was uh, there too. But you can see it's clear for all the LEDs to shine on through. 34 LEDs, man. The iPhone clone that had all the LEDs was 24, I think. So this should definitely win an award for having the most LEDs in it, I guess. There you go. If you want to count it yourself, feel free. But anyways, uh, let's keep on going. Holy moly, there's dual speakers on this thing. I was not expecting that. Actually, I should have known because of that and that, but I wasn't expecting to have like a 10 mil driver and then this huge ass 20 mil driver just stuck on there. Holy crap. That explains why it's so loud. What is with all these clones and dual speakers, man? There you go. There's your SIM slot just there, and then you've got your little other SIM slot just there, the little pins, and then you've got your micro SD card slot just under there. But then the question is, how do we proceed without killing it? There's a better look at the proprietary... Oh, there's a bit of a um, pin out there. There is the proprietary connector, as always, and the battery terminal just there as well. It's very strange having it there, but I guess they couldn't put it up there because of all of this going on. All right, uh, I'll try and take this off as carefully as I can. Well, this really doesn't require me to take any shielding off because it's all exposed right there. The CPU, of course, is the MediaTek MT6225A, as we have seen on the previous ones. The memory module is a Samsung one. Oh, that's interesting. Deciphering that chip there, it is a Samsung K5L2833ATA-AF66. 
I've just Googled that and it comes up with 256 megabits, which is 32 megabytes. The other chip there is a MediaTek MT6318A, probably a power IC or something like that. Or well, part of the power IC, I should say. Just leave the guts just like that, that's fine. Uh, the little camera, let's have a look at this boy. There's no codes on this camera, so it remains unknown. Probably a 0 0.3 megapixel one, I would assume anyways. I was in two minds if I wanted to take the shielding off or not, and I decided to do it. It says it has Yamaha sound, so I want to see if it does. You might be able to see the codes just there. I can't really see them because they're really, really tiny. But during editing, I'll have a look and see if I can find anything on those. Underneath the other bit of shielding there is another MediaTek chip, an MT68 something or other. Can't really see what that is. But yeah, that's all of them. That's all of the guts there. But I would say, spec-wise, this is probably the same as the other couple of iPhone clones I've had a look at so far. But still, it's always interesting to tear these apart and see what's inside of them. And uh, I don't think there's a Yamaha chip, as it said on the box. It said Yamaha Sound, actually. So, that might be just a bit of a fib. But anyways, I'm going to go ahead and put this back together and we'll see if it works. Do a spec list and call this a video. Okay, with it all back together, let's see if it still works. Oh. No. Bullshit, it's dead. I actually may have a bit of a problem. I think I've killed it. I think I might have killed this. Oh, it's still alive. Ha <laughs> ha! I just literally chucked the battery on charge for two seconds, and um, yeah, it all works. Oh, I'm glad I didn't kill it. I thought this was the first device I've actually killed. And no, I didn't. Oh, I'm so happy. Even though it's a piece of junk and it's literally useless, it's still a cool little collectible to have. I'm going to take the battery out now and uh, finish this one up. Alright, so if you want to learn the specs of the mini Barbie phone thingamajiggy, you might want to pause the video here and have a read through all of that. This spec list here hopefully is correct, but if I have mistaken anything, let me know down in the comments below. But otherwise, this thing is done. This is part four in the iPhone clone series. As I said, this one was just a bit of a throw off because the next two iPhone 2G clones are, yeah. Oh boy, I can't wait to get to them ones. But hopefully they'll be uploaded in another couple of days. But this is just to tie you over for now. It just has a funny design and Apple logo and Barb, it just it's so random. But you know what? It has its ups and downs. It's a cheapy device. It's got the Apple logo. It fits in the series. Not really. But that's okay. Part 4 is done. So I hope you all got some sort of entertainment in Part 4 of this series. And uh, Part 5 will be one of the weird iPhone 2G clones, which some of you may have seen on my old channel. Maybe. But stay tuned, because they will be coming up, as well as the new Wish video. Thank you very much once again for watching. I really, really do appreciate it. Take care, be good people, stay safe, and I'll see you all in the next video very, very soon. Still can't get over Barbie and Apple logo, man. It's a collaboration waiting to happen, I swear. If you like this content, feel free to leave a like or a dislike if you didn't. Thanks for watching, and I'll catch you all in the next video.